Hi, and welcome back to Wheat Beat. My name is Mike, and this is the second part of my new series on designing and building your dream bakery, and in this case, a micro bakery right in my own home. Now, last time we talked about working with Michelle Suess, who's designing the perfect layout for my modest space. And after my last video, Michelle asked me to give him a list of priorities, equipment I already knew I had, and to fine tune some of my preferences. Now, I took the time to do that, and this is what I came up with. Feel free to pause the video if you want to read through it, but the main thing under high priority are a full-size deck oven. I still want to talk about adding a convection oven, and I have existing equipment to incorporate, not all of them related to baking, like a commercial food processor, a griddle, a commercial blender, things like that. I also listed basic ingredients and other pantry supplies since the baking space is going to be the house's pantry as well. On the lower priority list, I have a proofer, room for a hot plate to boil or cook things like custard, a loader for the deck oven, I'll talk about that later, a refrigerator, I also included a request for a retarder, which is basically a specialized refrigerator that slows the speed of fermentation of finished dough. I also listed a sheeter, which is a device that layers dough for things like puff pastries and croissants. My priority was reliability and quality, which I list there in my in my priorities and then I finished with some questions for Michelle. Just as a reminder, this is the space we have to work with. I talked about it in my last video, but we'll talk about it here just briefly. Notice the main kitchen is up above and then there's a doorway connecting into the baking kitchen, which is basically a, a larger space, 11 by 14 feet connected to a smaller one, about 10 by 6 feet. Okay, here's a screenshot of the 3D walkthrough rendering. Now, I'm a big believer in getting a visual of your space before you commit to building it. You simply can't see everything on paper in two dimensions like you can in 3D. Better yet is when you can move around the space, which is not shown here, but I actually paid some guy in Vietnam a very reasonable fee to take the architect's design and make this beautiful rendering. And by the way, the refrigerator and sinks and stuff you see there, it's just random stuff the guy put in there. It does not at all reflect what we're planning for the space. And again, I'm showing you screenshots, but the version I have gives you the ability to walk around the entire house as if you're actually there. It's amazing. Anyhow, now that we understand the space, Let's take a look at Michelle's suggestions. Here was one of Michelle's first drafts. Again, go ahead and pause the video to look closely, but this pretty much gets everything I need into the kitchen. And as you can also see, things are pretty tight. Also, my work surface is small. It's only about six feet wide. I would have liked something a little bit bigger, like maybe eight feet or even more than that. And, but that's all the room I really have. Here's another option Michelle gave me. It's, it basically prevents having the work surface sticking out into the room, which I didn't really like. And overall, it seems like a little bit more efficient to me. But I still wanted a bigger work surface and I didn't need as many of these speed racks that he had in there. Um, so in another revision Michelle made, you can see he's also starting to call out some electrical requirements. And by the way, in case you're wondering what a speed rack is, it's basically a kind of this useful place to put rising dough and it has you know, these caster wheels on the bottom and you can move it around and around your kitchen uh, that way. And also in case you're wondering what a loader is, not everyone's familiar with that. It's basically listed here as item three. And what it is, is it's like a stage made out of a fabric and it's connected to the deck oven in some way. And then what you do is you place your finished dough on it and then when you wanna put it in the oven, you just pull this sheet that's on a roller and it actually puts all the dough into the oven all at once without you having to really handle it anymore. It's actually a very cool thing and I'll talk about it a little bit more as we get further along. Anyhow, we've also included a proofer under the deck oven and we did that to save some space. Here's another revision and uh, this one's kind of hammered out a few more details and this is the corresponding spec sheet where now Michelle is calling out even more precise electrical requirements water needs, exhaust, drainage, things like that. Listed here are floor drains. This is a floor drain. A floor drain is basically a hole in the floor where the liquids kind of free fall going directly from a pipe or something or from a sink and they fall right into this hole. Now I had no idea what a floor sink was before I got started with all this and apparently it's used very commonly in commercial kitchens and it's very flexible because you can just take any old pipe that, that discharges water like from an oven or from a sink or wherever and it goes right into this hole. So this is all a great start, but Michelle and I are kind of struggling to get things right to be honest with you and it's still kind of not loving it because it feels cramped. 
So now we're going to go back and look at some more options. And yeah, you know, it's kind of challenging because you have a chicken and egg problem. It's hard to finalize your final space before you know what equipment you're going to have there. And you can't really finalize your equipment list before you know exactly how much space you're going to have or the orientation things are going to go. So we picked out a preliminary deck oven, for example, but that could change and then everything else could change too. And then picking out the right deck oven will be difficult because we have special electrical limitations. Uh, for example, uh, I don't have three phase electrical uh, like commercial kitchens do. It's a special high power electrical that most residential uh, homes don't have access to, but commercial kitchens do. And then you want to pick equipment that's commercial grade, but almost all of it um, uses what's called three phase electrical. And since I don't have that, it drastically limits the, the kinds of equipment that I can select from. So there's a lot of challenges like that. But the bottom line is that nothing is really set in stone yet. And that's actually going to make my life harder, not easier as it turns out. Um, come back in a few days after we've worked out some more kinks and details uh, on our equipment list. And then I'll go over more refinements that will get us closer to a finalized floor plan. Don't forget to subscribe so you'll know when that video is uploaded. And until then, go bake something.